welcome to Diverse Joy. Mm. My co-host is Lucy Ricardo. I mean, I mean, Dr. <laughs> Amber Nelson, who's currently dressed as Lucy Ricardo That's from right. the I Love Lucy show. That's right. And my co-host is Captain Christopher Pike from Star Trek. I mean, Dr. Will Cox. <laughs> <laughs> Will. Um, so as we know, like Diverse Joy is this is our podcast about two so-called experts that bring bringing joy back into conversations around diversity. So what is bringing you joy? Oh, well, everything about October <laughs> Halloween season brings me joy. Yes. Uh, I love dressing up in costumes and cosplay. That's something we have in common. Uh, yes, absolutely. What, something our friendship's built on. I know. <laughs> Even more than diversity or science or any of that. It's really it's our cosplay. love for cosplay. <laughs> it's really our love for cosplay, yes. Um, and so I love all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, I also love all the the spookiness and the cooler weather yeah. coming around, that fall weather, all that, all that great fun. Yep. Uh, but because our official policies, we pick the one main joy. What's that the we one share. joy? Uh, my uh, partner and I, we do uh, an annual hollow craft. That's so uh, fun. We watch a couple of uh, scary movies, sometimes fun, scary, but but you know Halloweenish movies with our friends over at our house, and uh, we carve. Uh, craft pumpkins so those oh, are the pumpkins you get yeah, at a craft yeah. store like michael's or target or, or wherever you shop and uh you can keep them yeah um yeah. so so they last year after year so now we've done this for four or five years maybe by this point mm. um and i've done one every year uh, mine are kind of janky looking <laughs> <laughs> they fell off the pumpkin truck That's all right. uh That's but okay. uh, eric roman because he's such a fabulous artist yeah. he does really nice professional Love looking that. ones um, and so we have a collection. So now, like, so lining fun. the walkway to our house, we have, like, a dozen of them. Oh. Um, and and our, our friends do them and sometimes do additional crafts uh, that are Halloween-related. Like, we have one friend who always goes all out decorating his house. His name's Jeremy. Yes. Uh, and he, you know will spend like from mid-september through the the weekend before halloween decorating his house and so sometimes he's making a million spiders yeah. or making a whole bunch of ghosts That's so good. and uh, i don't know so That's i'm always so excited fun. for that yeah doing yeah. all the crafty things exactly i love that so uh lucy <laughs> what's bringing you joy yeah i uh, um yeah i mean like you said this time of year is just like full of all the dressing up. It's the start of my dress up <laughs> season <laughs> with costumes and sweaters and all of the things. And so um, I just love this time of year. But one of my favorite things to do, um, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I live outside of right outside of Portland, Oregon. And um, I love going pumpkin going to the pumpkin patch um and i try to go to different pumpkin patches every year sometimes i do multiple (laughs) pumpkin patch visits um i love being you know just super basic and taking all the pictures (laughs) with the pumpkins (laughs) doing the like uh corn mazes and um all of the fun just like fall festival things um, I love the oh, cider, fresh cider, Ooh. apple picking, like all the fall, <laughs> all of the fall, poss- every possible fall thing that you can think of is it's my time. And I know it's basic, the pumpkin spice lattes, no, but oh, it just makes me feel so cozy and warm and it just warms my heart. And so I even when I go by yeah. myself, like I will literally just go to the pumpkin patch by myself <laughs> and get all the pumpkins for decorating and um, carving and all of the things and take all the pictures, even just for me. But it's it's one of my favorite times of year. Oh, I love it. Heck yeah. 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 Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. Well, um, today, our topic uh we're going to be talking about interracial representation, interracial relationship representation mm-hmm. on TV, especially, but with a broader focus on representation, representation in the yeah. media. Yeah. Um, and that's part of why we're just the way we Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah. And, 
So as as we said in the introductions, uh, you're dressed as Lucy Ricardo <laughs> Lucy from Ricardo. I Love Lucy. I'm dressed as Christopher Pike from Star Trek. Both have 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 a nice history of representation mm-hmm. in different ways. Uh, but we we wanted to start with you. So yeah. tell us, like, what up with I Love Lucy? Yeah. What was great about that <sighs> show? First of all, like comedic genius. <laughs> like it's just a fantastic show um, on the whole, but. It was really groundbreaking because um, Lucy Ricardo being this like white, believe she was Irish, um, supposed to be Irish woman. McGillicuddy was her maiden name Mm. in the show. Um, And she was married to a Cuban American man and she was married to him in real life. Um, Folks and producers and people did not want him to play her on screen husband because they didn't think that people could accept them as a mixed race couple. And she fought for it, said she wasn't going to do it unless, unless he was playing her husband. Scottish, not Irish. Thank our you. Producer. Our producer. <laughs> was, like, our like, producer is always on it with the research. On it to make sure it was <laughs> accurate. So she was uh, a Scottish heritage with her bright red, which makes sense, with her bright red hair. And um, even though most of the seasons were in black and white. But um, so p- producers didn't think that they, that folks were ready for an uh, interracial couple. And she pushed for it um, and said, I'm not going to do it without him. And it was groundbreaking. She, they're the first interracial couple to be represented in media in this way. And um, like an actual, not through blackface, not through other other ways of kind of representing um, other folks. Uh, so it was just, I think it is incredibly important and they don't necessarily make it a big deal either in the no. show. It's just that he has an accent. He is Cuban American. It's very clear. He talks about being Cuban, um, but they don't necessarily, you know, for better or for worse, necessarily tackle it, them being an interracial couple, but they were. Yeah. And at that time it was monumental. Um, and at the, spe- especially considering that, um, this was the 50s, the early and mid 50s, and the Loving case, which made um, uh, interracial marriage a right. This uh, is the Supreme Court case of mm-hmm. Loving v. Virginia. Virginia, yep. Didn't happen until 1968, I believe. And maybe our producer can double check that date, but it's like 1967, 1968. So that was at least 10 to 15 years after. Lucy started airing and so at the time like it wasn't even legal across the United States to be legally married in an interracial relationship so again it's groundbreaking truly groundbreaking and I don't think she gets I don't think this the show or she gets the flowers that it deserves when it comes (laughs) to how groundbreaking it was 1967 Uh, so I was close yes 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 all right (laughs) Yeah, and I mean, part of why representation is so important is just letting people kind of see right. uh, th- those kind of models. Yeah. And 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 one of the main ways stereotypes and biases get perpetuated is by the lack of that. Right. Like right. letting our minds think like, well, all people of a certain race act right. this way right. or, or whatever. All relationships are, are the same race, are right. opposite sex, whatever. Right. Seeing different models for things helps kind of kind of kind of fight that Um, or the representation in the media reinforces those stereotypes right instead of when we talk about representation mattering is all types recognizing that no group of people is a monolith and if we only reinforce or the only types of representation that we have in media are the forms of reinforcing negative stereotypes then Again, we yeah. have this ongoing just reinforcement of negative associations. Yeah, and then then tying that to, mm-hmm. to uh, my costume. Yeah. So Lucille Ball mm-hmm. um, and Desilu Productions, her yeah. production company, actually uh, sponsored the mm-hmm. pilot for Star Trek. Not just the pilot. Yeah. So the first pilot uh, got rejected by NBC, mm. and Desilu said, "Heck mm-hmm. no!" <laughs> like and put up her production company's money for a second pilot saying that, you know, this show, which was the only show with this spread of diversity with a a black person in a position of authority and an Asian person and and so on and and all the diversity on Star Trek, uh, saying that that was important. Um, 
And and so Star Trek, uh, groundbreaking in a number of ways. Uh, speaking of the interracial relationship kind of thing, it's yep. it's uh, known for being the first on screen interracial kiss between right. a black woman, uh, Uhura, played by Nichelle Nichols, uh, with William Shatner. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, it, it's it's complicated. So in right. that same episode where there was that kiss between them, there's a scene with kind of whip cracking at Michelle Nichols, which yeah. has has weird slavery associations. So, yeah. so it's not that any representation is perfect or that, right. that even this one is. But uh, Star Trek. Uh, oh, yeah, that's all right. I know it's so great. Uh, it's meaningful. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so uh, Mae Jemison, mm-hmm. uh, one of the wait, the first black, the first woman, in black space, woman in space uh, yeah. was inspired by Nichelle Nichols. Mm. And uh, people say that, oh, God. Sorry. No, I'm a big you baby. don't have to apologize. <laughs> it's meaningful. Uh, I mean, this, this speaks to why representation matters. Some people will discount, like, TV and movies and their influence on people, but this is where we we get messages right and it is it is an it's incredible to see a show like star wars and it's star or trek. star, star <laughs> trek. oh my gosh don't Ooh. don't come for me don't come for me oh my god <laughs> star uh, trek and how how far reaching it is yeah. right and how how impactful it's been on such influential folks and leaders in our history um that made huge monumental strides and it wasn't only may jameson yeah uh and uh all right, I'm going to tell a story about Michelle Nichols <laughs> without crying and messing it up. Uh, but she actually quit. Uh, mm. She put in her notice like on a Friday. Right. Um, and Gene Roddenberry asked her to, to, to take some time and think about it. But but she, she put in her notice on Friday and wasn't going to be coming to work on Monday. Yeah. And that Saturday, uh, she was at she was at an NAACP event with Martin mm. Luther King. Mm. And mm. he said to her, like... No, mm. what you do is so important. It's so important, yeah. yeah. And uh, Star Trek yeah. was the only show that uh, he let his his, his kids, kids yeah. stay up to watch right. because it showed her mm-hmm. as as a woman doing her job, a black yeah. woman yeah. doing her job, doing her job, being in a position of authority. Yep. And and how much that meant to him to him and so many people. Yeah, yeah, no, this, again, um, never apologize. First of all, never apologize for tears. Oh, I like, can't get through the episode now, crying <laughs> like a baby. No, it's great. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with tears. And again, I think it, it highlights how important it is to see, when we see these two, like, giants in our history being inspired by the representation that they're seeing on television yeah. and movies and Absolutely. that leads to big real world changes and there isn't anything about nothing to dismiss about why representation <laughs> matters Absolutely. in one of the um, organizations that I that I work with um, with my youth our parent organization called Hala Mentors um, the CEO and founder um he always talks he always says you can't be it unless you see it right right and and again it comes back to that why representation matters like if if may jameson never saw somebody exploring space like you, why would i why would i go and do that or it yeah. doesn't feel like it's meant for me and i think about like interracial couples right like we also think of things uh, so long ago but 1967 like I'm not gonna say how old my mom was but my mom was born <laughs> during that, was alive during that time my grandparents were obviously having children and um I am the product also the product of an interracial relationship both of us both yeah. of us are products of interracial relationships and we like to think things are so in the past but it's very very recent and things like being able to see lucille ball or being able to see you know folks in star trek like all of these things happening 
paves the way to making it more normalized, making all of these forms of representation and inspiring whole generations of people to do things differently, to live their life differently, to to explore and to pursue careers that maybe they never saw themselves in before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh hashtag representation matters hashtag ma- representation matters <laughs> oh. deeply all um, right uh we're gonna take a brief break for me to emotionally get a hold of us <laughs> you got this <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back with our our story time mm. and our questions and our skill all the other great stuff we do awesome all right. that's good All right, we're back from break Yay. and talking about representation. Yeah. And I think I went to break a little too quickly because <laughs> we were so overclipped. Uh, but uh, Amber, you want to talk about a couple of other representation, uh, well, yeah. representative representation yeah, examples. Yeah, some examples. <laughs> well, I think uh, there are several things that come to mind, but I know, again, from a re- representation matters standpoint, um, I know I remember as I might have said before, but I'm a Disney adult, right? I love Disney. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I've always loved Disney. And I can remember the first time, one of the first times that I really felt like seen, not just by Disney, but in media as um, a princess specifically was Brandy R- Rogers and Hammerstein's version of Cinderella and they had cast Brandy and I think this was like yes. 1999 maybe 2000 with Whoopi Goldberg, with Whoopi Goldberg. and Bernadette Peters yes. and uh, uh, Whitney others. Houston was oh, well, fairy of course, godmother of <laughs> it was I mean it was just amazing and it was the first time 97 okay so it was even earlier um and I just remember seeing her and I was like oh my gosh like it's a princess that looks like me. Um, and we didn't have a first like actual animated Disney princess until 2009. I think I was in college for, for princess and the frog, which was princess Tiana. um, First black princess. First black princess. Sorry. (laughs) First black princess, uh, was princess and the frog. And, um, that was Tiana. So Brandy was my princess for so long and being able to see like oh my gosh like I've always loved Disney but I kind of only had Nala as my representation oh, no. <laughs> which is no. what it was um, and and so now I have um, Princess Tiana which she is a frog most of the movie and that's a whole other conversation but there's something really meaningful about that and there's yeah. um, you know and even seeing Wakanda forever the first time I saw that um, in the theater and it was the first time I saw like a predominantly black cast, black female cast, black female even. cast, and it not being about black pain or trauma or um, or even it being necessarily about being black, but they yeah. just were, and they were brilliant, and they were strong, and like the leading nation in like everything. Um, and I remember just sitting there just awestruck and I, I saw it when I was in Baltimore. So it was a predominantly black theater and we all just like sat there for like 10 minutes after the movie, just like absorbing it and like being with each other and recognizing like, wow, this is a fictional story, a fictional race of people, um, all of these things. But it was so meaningful to be able to watch a, um, MCU uh, fictional like story fantasy story that um, captured us our essence the African diaspora in such a powerful way yeah yeah awesome yeah, yeah I also uh, back in uh, he said 1997 the yeah. Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella with Brandy I loved that and yeah. uh, one, one thing about that if, if the viewers or listeners don't don't know much about that they, they did kind of like uh Extremely overtly <laughs> race blind casting, yeah. where so Whoopi Goldberg is the queen, yep. and and uh, her husband is a, a white man, yep. and their son is Filipino, I yeah. believe, is the, mm-hmm. the actor was, and and you know the wicked stepsisters of Cinderella, mm-hmm. one was white, white one was black, black. and yep. the mother's white, yep. and so it's just like like no, uh, there's no biological right. like oh yeah. you know, <laughs> anybody but anything, that yeah. that meant so much to me as yes. well as an adopted yeah. 
multi ethnic, multi racial, right. complicated kid. Right. Like we said right. a few episodes Absolutely. ago. Like I, my my main ethnicity is complicated. Complicated. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like 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 seeing that and and also just this feeling of like, look, there can be a family where no one looks like, Absolutely. and that's my family, yeah. and that is a different twist on representation that also mm-hmm. just meant a lot to me and felt really good. Absolutely. Plus, Brandy and Whitney can sing. Wait, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean. Yeah, absolutely. You didn't, you didn't need us to tell you that, but, but in like, case the music needed, is good. In case you needed a reminder, yeah. the music is really good. Yeah, and like every once in a while, Amber and I text each other, like whenever something about that movie happens, right? Like, I'm like, I ooh, know. yes, Brandy. yes, and just a super random side note, but there come the the descendants. So this is a very Disney specific thing. Um, the Descendants is a TV show and yeah. movie series in in Disney about the kids of like famous. Disney characters and Brandy and Prince Charming from the Rodgers and Hammerson are reprising their role um, coming up in the newest Descendants and I just I can't I <laughs> cannot even uh, like contain myself yes. <laughs> it's gonna be so great to see Brandy and, in the role again and you know, it's always okay that you do a deep dive as long as it's something that's bringing you joy because that's me the joy. point that's exactly this diverse joy we got awesome uh great mm. um did you have any more uh before we do stories yeah well i mean i the only other part that thing that i was thinking about was you know we also had another disney reference <laughs> um, but that that i think that they're they're on this kick of doing live action kind of versions of their their classic characters and we have um little mermaid and that they they've cast as black and um Again, I think the retelling of the stories with different characters and different backgrounds is super important. Um, and also there's been a lot of backlash about no. uh, about Halle Bailey playing Ariel as a black woman. Um, people saying like, well, she, Ariel's not white. And like, well, also mermaids don't exist. So... <laughs> Yeah. So also, um, it, uh, and it, and also like you know, Sebastian in the movie, which is the little crab, is like Caribbean, and so if he's Caribbean, like actually, <laughs> if we want to be accurate, she might might be black. We just didn't color her that way <laughs> with our with our color pencils. But anyway, I just think it's really interesting to you know just to note um, one that we're moving towards trying to do some retelling of stories to include more diversity and representation. And also that there's also pushback on on what that looks like, too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So heading into story time, <laughs> mm. uh, we're sticking with kind of representation, media, and and so on. Um, and we always uh, try to do one more, more negative story and then one more positive one. So yep. one where maybe people are aren't doing diversity well so to speak uh <laughs> yeah. and then and then uh one more people do yeah um and so you have a neg- negative story this one yes. co- is coming from the media yeah uh so please yeah and i was gonna look at my notes on my phone but it looks like my phone is dead but i can tell <laughs> tell the story so um i believe is the academy awards are coming with new um regulations and kind of standards around um to be nominated for an Oscar. You have to have a minimum number of cast members from underrepresented groups. Yeah. So they're kind of trying to improve, you know, diversity and inclusion and and representation in who is getting awards for their work. And um, there have been several articles um, and different media outlets about Richard Dreyfuss's um, reaction to that. And the first thing that he said was that the policies make him vomit. And Ugh. one of the most um, outstanding comments that he made was that he was he was praising, um, you know, past actors who were in blackface, um, like Laurence Olivier. And, um, and he was saying, so you're telling me that I will never be able to play a black man? Um, <laughs> and uh, to that, I say, yes, yes. <laughs> yes that's you exa- should not be playing yes. a black man. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. That's exactly what we're saying. No, you will never be able to play a black man. Um, again, we're, we're beyond that. We should be beyond that. And the fact that we have a prominent figure in the acting world that is asking that question and, 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 um, you know, saying that 
he feels offended that he'll never be able to play a black man in a movie is uh, is appalling, actually. Who who was trying to cast him as a black I, man? Also, anyway. who's trying to cast him as a black man in a movie? I also want to know that. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Oof right. is is uh. accurate. <laughs> well, in in a more uh, positive, no. uh, but but somewhat related story. Uh, so so back in twenty twenty, uh, there were a lot of conversations about representation in, in the media, and yeah. one one area that this discussion focused was animated. Uh, mm. TV shows and movies. Right. And sometimes there will be an animated show that has a black character, mm -hmm. uh, but voiced by a white white actor. Right. Um, and among these conversations uh, was the, the TV show The Simpsons, right. um, which had several characters like that. And, you know, part of how they did The Simpsons was there would be one actor who would do five or six characters. Maybe right. one of them was black. And uh Amid the the hottest part of these discussions, Simpsons came out with a statement, and this was in June 2020, so mm -hmm. right right in the middle of it. And they were like, you know, from now on, we're not doing that. Like wow. we see yeah. how that's harmful, yeah. how 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 that's not great, and so so they stopped. And, mm -hmm. and I like uh, how they did it in part because people didn't lose their jobs, like these right. actors who had been playing these characters for a long time back when. I'm not necessarily saying it was right back then, but right. <laughs> but right. before we were having this discussion as, as a them. culture, mm -hmm. um, so they didn't lose their job because they still they play other characters on the show who who are white. Mm -hmm. um, but then also black actors got cast exactly, and so that's that's well we're going to talk about that later mm -hmm. when we get to the question. Mm -hmm. But 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 you know they cast black actors right. to fill those roles, right? Um, and I think what's important about that too is to say like you know what like we're gonna make mistakes and sometimes we're not aware that we've been perpetuating and doing something that's really like not great but what was lovely about that even though it's 2020 and it's kind of late that when they kind of recognize like this is not right we need to do something about it they, yeah. they apologized for it and said we're gonna do better and they did yeah. and they made actionable change they went through um, they were culturally responsive. They stepped in and they made actionable change. And that's, that is all that we can ask of each other is yeah. to take accountability, to apologize and to find ways of moving forward. Absolutely. And so, so with that, uh, both those examples are closely related to the question that we kind of, kind of pulled to get into together today. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is still early in our run. Uh, <laughs> those of you listening or watching, right. uh, Please, if you have questions or ideas yeah. or things you'd like to hear us talk send about, them send them in. Yep. Uh, you can do that at diversejoy.com. Uh, but this is a question I've, I've, I've actually heard uh, asked of others and people have asked me when I've, I've done some of my work uh, with the bias habit breaking training. Mm -hmm. But like this idea that, you know, acting mm -hmm. specifically talking about like actors playing things that they're not right. acting is about stepping into shoes that aren't your own. So yeah. what's so bad about actors playing identities they don't share? And uh, this relates to kind of the Simpsons sort of thing we we're just yeah. talking about. Richard Dreyfuss, why can't he play yeah. a black man? Mm -hmm. But also things like uh, people wearing fat suits right. or straight characters playing gay. Right. Or uh, we, we recommended the show Superstore a couple right. of episodes ago. I mean, there's an actor there, Garrett, mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, character Garrett, character. Mm -hmm. uh, who's in a wheelchair but played by an actor that right. is not in a wheelchair. Right. And that's one of the, the big examples of this kind of kind of thing what's yeah. wrong with that yeah and let, i have you thoughts have, you have thoughts <laughs> but yeah. but you go you go ahead <laughs> i uh, i mean i think that it, it has been a practice that's been around for a really long time um and it there are several issues with it one is that it can be a mischaracterization there are exaggerations it reinforces it oftentimes when they're when folks are playing characters that they do not identify with or identify as they play into exaggerated stereotypes yeah. of those those that population be it a racial or ethnic or sexuality and 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 yeah, uh, the, with the sexuality specifically. So a huge portion of my research career was about stereotypes related to to gay men, especially, mm. but but the LGBT community at large also. Right. Um, and there's actually this research that shows. Yeah. So when uh, straight actors play gay male characters, straight male mm -hmm. actors play gay male characters, they speak with more of a lilt, more of a yeah. lisp, more feminine, yeah. more femininity in their voice. They infuse that kind of stereotypical idea yeah. more so than when you do these audio. 
analyses of yeah. gay actors, gay male actors playing gay male characters. Mm-hmm. So the kind of stereotypes, which which we, we all have and all influence us to a certain right. extent, get into the acting more when it's someone who, who's, who's portraying something that's not their own identity. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that that's one of the most harmful pieces um, that that can come out of that. And it, it, and it can really, um, I'm thinking back to some of the early iconography of like black men um, that were blackface and that they, that it portrayed um, black men as, as dangerous and that they would, and animalistic and, and sex fiends. And um, again, like they're just these, these, really yeah. horrible um, stereotypes that started Which in that way. Is it started in that way and they were part of explicit propaganda exactly. campaigns. Exactly, yep. So uh, I'm, I'm sure it's on our list of episode topics to get <laughs> yes. to, but like where stereotypes <laughs> come from and how they're they're perpetuated. But, mm-hmm. but you know, blackface during minstrel shows mm-hmm. way back in the yep. day were actually about propaganda for slavery. Yes. Like, and, and this is just... This is not uh, social justice rhetoric. Right, this rhetoric. Is, yeah, this this is, is historical fact, fact. that is mm-hmm. well documented that there right. were pushes to maintain slavery right. and then to bring it back after the abolition of slavery. Yep. And it was by portraying black people in ways that supported right. the idea of slavery. So yep. them being bestial and yep. aggressive and yep. scary, yep. the the message was we need to bring slavery back because you're in danger Because now. you're in danger. And, yeah. and it is it is explicit is crystal clear in the history yeah uh so so yeah um but and then getting back to modern days uh to to pretend i'm a politician for a minute (laughs) it's about jobs right we need jobs jobs. yeah so so it's harder for gay people to get jobs acting and very often people will believe the gay actor can't play a straight character right uh it's it's harder for black people to get cast right. if it's not a role that's especially written to be a black for character black mm-hmm. for disabled people mm-hmm. to get on a TV show. It's like, right. well, we're gonna have to deal with this person being disabled. Right. If it's a fatter person, it's like, oh, people don't want to see a fatter person on TV. Right. It's harder for these people to get jobs. Yep. So when you have someone who's not a member of that disadvantaged group, right, playing like yeah. like it's when there's finally it's a role like, written, there's, there's someone a, in a wheelchair. Finally a role for this person specifically. What are we doing? All of a sudden it that goes to the wheelchair can't have that job yeah yeah um, and when you talk about we have we haven't really talked about like power and privilege but like we have a privileged group already just taking more of those opportunities yeah. like you're saying right? well, well and there was uh similar to the continuing the person without a disability playing mm-hmm. the disabled uh the the part of a person with an accommodations need. right uh that tv show that TV show uh, Glee. Yeah. So that's not oh, one yeah. I ever watched, mm-hmm. but it also had a uh, an actor who didn't need a wheelchair p- yep. playing someone who was in a wheelchair. And that actor yeah. has since come out and said, you know, right. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. If it were today, I, I wouldn't accept that role yeah. Be- yeah. because they've understood this. And again, yeah. it, like like you were saying with The Simpsons, it's right. about you know be re- be responsive. Yep, be responsive and and recognizing and recognizing that you know we you know, we talk about. I mean, talk about this and maybe this is a whole other topic, but, you know, cancel culture. And I, I don't really believe in cancel culture. I believe in accountability. Right. Yeah. And like people change, people make mistakes. But if you can acknowledge like, man, oh, that was um, that was a mistake. I didn't realize the impact that what I was doing had. Or even if you did, but now you now you understand it differently and yeah. you understand why you want to change. We have to have room for people to also grow and change. Do we need do they need to be held accountable? One hundred percent. And we do need that. And we need to have space for people to make change and say, like, I'm never doing this again. And this is how I'm going to show that. And then we hold them accountable to that, too. Right. Yeah. If, they, if they continue to go by back to blackface or can continue to go back and do, you know, play these roles and then we have a different conversation on yeah. our hand. Um, but I do think that I think it's important to like hold, hold folks accountable, but also give them room to, to grow and to change. Um, but you were talking about the disabilities. There's a new movie out. Um, hasn't been out too long now, but champions. Um, and it has um, Woody Harrelson as the pr- primary, the, the main character. And it is about working with a group of, of folks with developmental disabilities and they cast folks that have a range of developmental yeah. disabilities. And it was a great movie. Um, and I know other movies have tried to do that in the ba- in the past. Um, 
and have had a limited number of those that have developmental disabilities and other folks that were playing them. Um, but I thought that they did a really good job and they really tried to elevate these talented actors that have disabilities that wouldn't normally be able to play, you know, get these Anything. kinds of roles. <laughs> yeah. Role. Yeah. Absolutely. And awesome. That's 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 amazing. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, today's skill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Our skill. Uh, what is our skill today? Well, our skill is what we've already been talking about, <laughs> really. Um, so, so we talk about it as as, as one of these tools. So, mm-hmm. you know, you have, in this habit breaking model, you have motivation to work on things, yep. awareness of different ways bias can play out and you can right. be uh, complicit in that. And then uh, tools to help you work against those biases. Yeah. And and one and then you put in the effort by using those tools, right? Uh, and and th- this tool is is a big one that we've built into all of this uh, podcast, really. Yeah. And it's called broaden your input. Yes. So so part of the way these stereotypes get maintained is by having very narrow representations, lack mm-hmm. or lack of mm-hmm. representation mm-hmm. of of members of different groups. And so so there are a number of ways to broaden your input, which uh, I'll maybe revisit as, as separate skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but one big way is of course through the media. Yeah. Um. And so if the more you can, uh, have these sorts of stories, especially mm-hmm. when they are created by members of the group in question right. and portrayed by members of the group in question, like right. we're talking about today, that puts uh more information into your head, input mm-hmm. into your brain that pushes back against the narrow stereotypes. Right. The more time you spend with these kinds of shows podcasts, whatever mm-hmm. they are, mm-hmm. the more you can have information in your head that's from the perspective of members of these groups, the less space the biases and stereotypes take up and right. less influence they have on your behavior. Over Absolutely. Time. And this is why at the end of every episode, yeah, we, we have the recommendation. But do, yeah. do you want to say anything about the, the, the tool before we... Uh, jump into your recommendation well you know i think that that you know the broadening your input is huge and that can be through tv and movies and books and things like that but also thinking about your social media like who do you follow right and i i know that you know in our conversations and things around this that and in my own growth around various topics like that has been something that i specifically targeted is like my Instagram and who I'm following. I don't really do Twitter, but like the, these spaces where I might be consuming um, media from other folks that are not necessarily just my friends, um, but so that I can see different perspectives and different folks that have different life experiences um, so that I can be exposed to them and, and what that means. And this, it's been again, transformative for me to, to broaden you know, who I'm following on social media, which means, awesome. you know, not, am I not only just seeing the things that reflect me, which is important, but I'm also seeing things that reflect groups and people that I don't have as much experience with or don't see a whole lot. Yeah. And, and sometimes when doing this kind of Jedi work out mm-hmm. in the world, trainings or whatever, we get questions from people like, how's the right way that I talk about something? Right. Or, and, and we're bringing some of those in as our questions. Right. Each episode. Yes. But like, what's the right terms to use for this? Right. How do I ask this question of someone? Yeah. And you know what? If you're following uh, a more diverse group of people on yep. social media, Often you'll have more resources to understand yeah. that or you hear how they're talking about something right. and that can inform mm-hmm. a better way for you to talk about a given yeah. issue yeah. Um, and you, you have something to fall back on. And, and it, so uh, broadening your input can be useful yeah. in a variety of ways. Yeah, it, it increases your comfort with it too, right? Yeah. Just like from, you know, clinical perspective of just like increasing your exposure is also increasing your comfort with yeah. it. So yeah, there's so many reasons to broaden, broaden yeah. your input. All right. And then, as always, Mm -hmm. uh, we end with one uh, recommendation of something that brings us joy, which most of the time is also a way to broaden your input. Absolutely. Uh, So uh, (laughs) today, uh, Amber has a wonderful recommendation (laughs) for us. I'm going to give two. Oh, two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One is just i mean i've already talked about it today but it's i love lucy like i work (laughs) i work with students who are you know in their early and mid 20s and i wore this costume this year and most of them did not know who i was and i'm (laughs) very clearly lucy ricardo from i love lucy i even have i love lucy on my um apron here and some (laughs) of them are like what who um but it's just good funny tv she's groundbreaking not just because of 
uh, being a multiracial couple, but she pushed back on gender stereotypes. She pushed back on, she was the first person to, woman or person, I should say, excuse me, not only women could be pregnant, but first person to be pregnant on TV. Um, they couldn't call it pregnant because uh, they weren't allowed. That was too provocative <laughs> <laughs> to say pregnant, but she was expecting. Um, she was wore pants and she wasn't only just a homemaker. She was always trying to create, get a career and, um, and it's just good fun. Um, so I definitely recommend if you've never seen it, and even if you have, go back and revisit I Love Lucy because she's a comedic genius. <laughs> and so yeah. go and watch it. Her facial expressions, I'm very inspired by I Love Lucy. So <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> when I'm looking at you as we as we do this these episodes, you know, you have to do the eye cross. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I feel like it's very there, reminiscent. It's true. I have a lot of I Love Lucy <laughs> facial expressions. So definitely go see that uh, the other the other one I'm just going to say really quickly is Bridgerton if you haven't watched Bridgerton and I am not like a period piece like you know nope. girly I don't really like them but it's very modern it's really fun and it also has a pretty diverse cast or at least some racial ethnic diversity and it's not about it's just about the story kind of like that Rogers and Hammerstein version of like kind of that colorblind casting it has a very similar vibe and so go check it out it's on Netflix very cool oh and very you nice. can find and you can find I Love Lucy on Paramount Plus and I think maybe Roku so it might not be the most accessible show but if you can find episodes or even YouTube go find them they're great <laughs> very nice all right. I'm Dr. William Cox. And I'm Dr. Amber Nelson. And produced by Eric Roman Vining with music by Jay Arner. Diverse Joy is consumable as either an audio only podcast or a video podcast, both accessible at diversejoy.com. Diverse Joy is the official podcast of Inequity Agents of Change, a nonprofit devoted to the dissemination of evidence based approaches to reduce bias, create inclusion promote equity, and enhance diversity. All that good Jedi work. Jedi work. Learn more at biashabit.com. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, we turned <laughs> on last click of the day. <laughs> <laughs>